Welcome back, everybody. What I want to do this week is talk about some pretty important topics in machine learning, uh, which goes to the fundamental question of why do we predict? And like we spoke about in the past, it's to improve our chances of a positive outcome or a desired outcome. And some of the ways that we do this are various algorithms, but one of the most fundamental uh, building blocks of machine learning is this idea of regression. And we've kind of played around with this in the past already. We've talked about the size of houses versus the price of houses and our ability to predict um, house prices based on size. And we have in regression a couple of different ways of doing this. We have linear regression, which we're going to spend the majority of our time talking about today. And we have this logistic regression and you can see with logistic regression it really falls under the domain of zero or one it doesn't really allow us to uh, shape our line slope in the same way and so i'd like to actually spend a lot of time today talking about linear regression and to do that we have to understand what is a slope all about what is the the slope of a line and this probably takes you back to high school math class and you're talking about the slope of a line and really can be thought of as steepness okay we take our line and we think okay how steep is that how do i quantify the steepness of that and one thing you can look at is you can say there's a an increase in the vertical distance or measurement and an increase in horizontal movement. And so if we have our increase in our vertical and our increase in our horizontal, then what that implies is that we get a change. And you can see this triangle there, it's a symbol for Delta. So it's our change in our vertical and our change in our horizontal. And so when we look at this and we say we have a positive movement to the right of one, that's a increase in the horizontal direction of one or in the X direction of one. And likewise, we have this increase in our vertical of a positive two. Okay, so we have a change in an, a Y and a change in X, which ultimately does create our slope. And, you know, we basically treat this as a fraction. And because now what it tells us that our slope is actually now the number two. We have a slope of two. And doesn't matter the line. We always can mathematically calculate the slope of a line based on its movement or its change in vertical versus its change in horizontal. Let's look at this in another way. We have this equation of a line. Okay, and we have some samples that we want to take. And there's a reason that the two itself is actually in a different color than the rest. But let's say that we start off with our very first sample to accompany our Y coordinate, our intercept. Okay, and let's say we go with zero. And the first thing we wanna do is we wanna substitute the X with that first number zero. And this gives us a coordinate system. So uh, X is zero, Y is two. So when we plot that on the graph, we have a point in the, you know, the first point of our slope. Uh, but let's say we go with another, the next number up, we increment by one. And now our one or our X is equal to one. And we feed that into our slope equation there. And we get the resulting output of four. So when we plot that coordinate, you can start to see that very quickly we can understand that there is a change by one. And in the Y side, there is a change in by two. Okay, and so on and so on. However, we still get a change in the X of one. We still get a change in the Y of two. And 
you know, this just continues to rinse, wash, and repeat if we're incrementing by one. And, you know, ultimately what this looks like is just a fraction again. This is just simply the change in Y over the change in X. And that ultimately gives us our slope. Okay, and we can just join the two points. And our slope of our line is two. Okay, and so it's no coincidence that the two that we see here beside the X and the two that we end up with, they become our coefficient. We call this our coefficient. And let's look at this old example again. We had applicant three and they had a, a, an aptitude test of 6.5 and a GPA of three. And so somewhere in this linear regression, we're able to try to make a, uh, a reasonable guess as to whether or not they're going to get accepted as an officer or not as an officer. Okay. And so we can draw this line here. And what is it ultimately we're doing? We're achieving a slope. The goal here is to identify all of the components of this slope. And so here it is again, I've just scaled it out a little bit better. Okay. And if I look at this particular line here, you would might say, well, well, how is it that you arrived at this particular line? Okay. Well, why didn't I end up with this particular line? Why didn't I get that line there? Ultimately, we're going to let the algorithm choose this line. This is our line of best fit. And one of the things that we do is we've got our slope, we've got our line, and we look at these points and we're looking for these changes. So point one has a change, point two has a change, and point three has a change, okay? And we're looking at that delta. So delta one, delta two, or delta three. And we have this mathematical equation here that talks about how to process that data. Okay, and for the most part, don't focus in so much on that, you know, fancy looking equation. I, I want to keep this to a real practical sense. Okay, and so let's look at this one more time on here. And we see the same points, same scale, same sort of graph. Okay, but we have again, this same equation. This is our equation of a slope. And, and what are the component pieces here? We have the, the slope itself. This is the number that um, tells us, you know, we just calculated it a minute ago. It was two. That's our slope. Okay. And we have X as a variable and we have B. B becomes our Y intercept. This is the line that intercepts with the vertical Y axis. Okay. And we just saw this a minute ago. This is the same thing. This is our slope equation for our line. Y equals MX plus B or Y equals 2X plus 2 in this particular example. Okay. And when we look at this again from our point of view with this um, example that we've had all along with the GPA and the aptitude test, you can see now where those component parts fit into the equation for our slope. Okay, so you can see that the GPA, by the, the way that we predict what the GPA will be, is through this equation, M multiplied by the aptitude test plus B. We determine the slope of the GPA overall. Okay, and you know, looking at this one more time, you can see the equation at the top and everything on the right side of the equals are known as the independent variables, the things that can change. And everything on the left side of the equal is the dependent variable. Okay. And here we are, we look at this one more time. And just to be clear, I, I just want to show it in a little bit of a different way. If we were to try to put this on another uh, X and Y axis, what we're really talking about ultimately is this idea. M becomes the slope of the line and B becomes the, the intercept, 
okay, the Y intercept. And so you'll see in a moment when we get into the code that M becomes our, we're gonna use this and call it our um, regression coefficient. And B, we're gonna call this our regression intercept. So here in Jupyter Notebooks, I've got this file called linear regression or just reg for short. And what I'm gonna do is actually uh, bring in a, a couple of imports and it's gonna be pandas um, as PD and then import uh, numpy as MP. And of course, always import uh, matplotlib dot uh, pyplot, pyplot, as uh, plt. Okay, and then the final one I'm going to bring in here is this, uh, it's going to be from, uh, because this is a module, sklearn import linear, and let me see if uh, my tab picks it up. It doesn't pick it up yet, one, because I spelt it wrong, linear underscore model. Okay, so that's an important one that I need to have for this particular one. And so below that, now that I have all my imports, I'm going to uh, hit the escape and then the B. And I'm going to add my uh, a CSV file that I've used in the past in a previous video. And this is going to be pd.read underscore CSV. Okay, and inside the brackets uh, with the double quotes, it's going to be um, military selection.csv. It's better if I just copy and paste it because I know that that one is spelled properly. And I'll set that to a capital. And of course, now that I've done that, I want to add that to my data frame. So data frame equals. Okay. And in order to see this, I'm just going to have a really quick look at what this looks like. So run it from the top and then go here. And you can see I've got something going on. And that's okay, it looks like it cleared up. And so what does this tell us? Uh, we're looking at about 99 uh, rows here, three columns. We've got test, GPA, accepted or not accepted. And, and for this, I'm not overly concerned about uh, accepted or not accepted. I'm more interested in some other things here. So the, the first thing I do want to do is I'd like to actually do a scatter plot of this data. Okay, so that is going to be percent mat plot lib and in line. Okay. And from there, we're going to do PLT uh, for plot. And it's not a method yet, but it will be uh, plot dot X label. And in the X label, it's going to be, um, let's think about this for a second. Uh, what I want, this label is actually what I want it to say. So we do have test and GPA, but I want this one to be uh, single brackets aptitude uh, test. And I hope I didn't spell aptitude test because that would be embarrassing. Aptitude test, that's one label. And my other label, is going to be the GPA and that will be in the Y axis and we'll set this to GPA. Okay. And then finally with this, I want to do a scatter. Uh, so it'll be plot scatter. And in the scatter, what I want to output is our, our, um, data, our sample data for the test and the GPA. So this will be DF dot test. And I'm just taking the column headings and df.gpa. And that's all I'm doing with that. So let's give that a look. All right. So you can see that this is the way our data is scattering on this particular plot, which is really good. Uh, I, I'm just happy that something's working. Now, remember at the top, we went ahead and we got this linear model. And I'm going to copy that because I'm going to use it down here. And the way I want to use this is I want to get the linear regression 
function from uh, where did we get it up here? We got it from this from SK Learn. So within SK Learn, there's this linear regression function, and I'm going to copy that and I'm going to do a dot. And if I type in lin, there it is, and then tab, and put that in as a function, and it doesn't take any parameters at the moment. Sorry. It's not taking any parameters, but what I want to do now is I've, I've done the right side. I'd like to go and do the, the left and I'm going to put this into this regression. So it's just going to be called reg or yeah, basically, uh, reg for regression. And here now I want to fit this. And when we, when we're talking about trying to fit it, you know, remember this, line of best fit kind of thing. But I, I, I want to get a line that fits in there first off uh, in, in the best possible way. And so inside this fit method or function, uh, we've got a couple of parameters we're going to send. But, you know, we, we have to be a little bit cognizant of what it is that we're, we're sending. So this is going to be DF, okay, and then double square brackets. And then in here, we just want the test. Okay. Um, we just want the test, which is not aptitude test. We want the title of the column itself. So we want test. That's the one that we want. And then over here, after the comma, we're going to say df.gpa. That's what we're after. Okay. And if this compiles properly, it should just return a linear regression function to us. Okay. So let's run that. Okay. And this is what I was hoping for just to have this linear re regression line. Okay. Um, now one of the things I can do is this, uh, predict function. Okay. And I think what I'm going to do is try to make a, uh, a predict, a prediction of a GPA based on, let's say somebody's aptitude test. All right. And I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to say X equals, uh, let's say 7.4. Okay. It's just random there. I have, I have no meaning for that whatsoever. And down here, I'm going to say reg dot predict. And let's see, yep, it picks it up with the tab button. That's always a good sign that if you use the built-in tools um, the way they're they're intended, if it's called an IntelliSense in different IDEs, but if your IDE or your environment is picking up what you're looking for, that's usually a good sign that you're you're you've got everything configured the right way. And so what I'm gonna do in here inside that, and again is square brackets again, and I'm going to put in the X. So I want the X from this line one here. So it allows me to not have to go in and re, uh, update this one later. I can just keep changing this X value and it makes it a little bit easier for me. Okay. And I just want, I'm going to put in a comment that this is the, uh, aptitude test, which is, uh, equals to X. All right. Now let's have a look and see what happens here when we run this. I'm getting this sort of prediction. Okay, so what it is saying is that if you're getting somewhere around here, like a uh, 7.4 on the aptitude test, it's likely that your GPA, if you plot it up, if you go straight up and then over, it says that your, your GPA will probably be somewhere around this spot here, which is what we're looking for. But I want to talk again about these, these coefficients. So remember what I said when we were looking at this piece is that I'm very interested in this reg.coef and reg.intercept. Okay. I'm, I want to know what these two values are going to be. And I'm going to show you why I want, I want to know what those are, because we're going to come back and, and sort of make a little bit of a comparison to, to guarantee that we're on the right track. Okay, so I'm going to do uh, exactly what I said. It's going to be reg.co. And if I type in my tab, it doesn't work because I already started misspelling it. Uh, and there it is. So reg.coefficient, 
but I'm actually going to assign that to M. Okay, because M was part of the equation of our line. And so I'm gonna do this and now uh, let's just say that um, uh, this is equal uh, equal to M, okay? Uh, now, if I wanna print that out, I'm just gonna type in M here and let's run this. Now, what are we getting here? We're getting an array of this number okay this this coefficient number and ultimately it doesn't probably mean much to you right now but let's keep going and see where this goes so if i go into the next cell i'm gonna say reg dot dot uh enter intercept right and i'm gonna put a note and say that this one is equal uh to b okay b and i noticed i made a spelling mistake. So this one is going to be equal to B. So if I say B equals this uh, intercept, we've now got our B value. And so what does this really look like? So when I run this, uh, notice I'm not getting a thing because I didn't actually type in B. And so if I run that now, I get this other number. So right now I, I have a guess, I have a, a test score, I have my M and I have my B. So ultimately what I'm saying is I have everything here on this screen. I have my test score, I've got my M and I've got my B. So if I continue on, um, what I've got now is Y equals MX plus B. This is what I currently have. And let's look at this for a second. So if we say GPA equals, literally it equals M times X plus B. If I print out my GPA, what is it going to give me? And let's run this. And you can see now we can prove that we've got the right number. Because I put my, my uh, linear regression and I've done the prediction from the the library functions that are in there and I just said hey uh, use 7.4 as my x okay and we went through all of this but when we combine all of the different uh, independent variables together we see that the resulting output dependent variable is actually the same exact value. So in this way, really what I've done is I've just kind of, uh, I've, I've done the prediction, I've got the value that I want, but I'm, I'm walking you through the steps to see where this is all going in terms of the, the slope of a line. And I have one more thing to do, and that is, let's look at it. So if I go to here and I say percent mat plot lib, uh, and I say in line, and we're going to, again, we're going to plot this out, but this time I want to, I, I want to see my line in there. Okay. In fact, what I can actually do instead of going through all that pain is I can just take this and uh, drop it in here and I can add one more line to this. Okay. And that extra line is just simply going to be um, plot plt dot plot, sorry, and this will be df dot test comma reg dot predict and it picked it up which is always a great sign and I put my brackets and just like uh, before we were doing this sort of bizarre looking uh, syntax so df and then two square brackets and inside here it'll be test okay and then outside of the square the first square bracket there i'm gonna put in a comma and i'm gonna say color um color equals let's say uh red okay color equals red uh and then let's have a look let's see if i did this properly okay so 
now you're seeing this, okay? This is what the, the final result of our line is, right? And of course, you know, I can go back up to here and I can change my prediction. Okay, so let's say, um, I don't know, I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm just picking a random number. I'm gonna say uh, 6.5. So 6.5, and if you're doing this in a Jupyter Notebook, just remember that you have to uh, compile this from the previous cells above, all right? And we'll continue to work our way down, and, and there it is, okay? And notice that if we say uh, 6.5, so roughly around here, uh, what we're saying is it's almost perfectly three, but it's not. We're actually at 2.97. I mean, that's pretty close to three, but it, it's not exactly that. So based on my test score being six and a half, it, it looks like it might be somewhere around this particular dot. Uh, and then you go over and it's 2.972. All right, and if I wanna look at this a little bit better, I, I right down below, I can probably just, um, I can probably just print the GPA. I could probably just do it this way, a little bit cleaner, uh, and then run that. And so you can see, I'm, I'm, my test was six and a half, and I'm almost three right here. Okay. So an important thing to understand is this, this particular problem has been a single variable. Okay. So what that means is I'm taking my test. And I'm, I've just really been predicting a single output variable. And I've ignored accept it altogether for this particular sample. And what happens though, if I have another scenario like this, I've got housing. Okay, so if I look at my, my, my housing prices, uh, and you can see this was an example I was trying to do for the Toronto ones, but it it didn't really fit. So I kind of modified the data and I can take it out of there. But really what this is, is just housing. And we've got uh, the area of the, the apartments, the number of rooms and the number of bedrooms, as well as their prices. Okay, so if you're, if you're, doing this or watching along, you might want to make sure that you don't have these set in your Excel spreadsheet or your CSV file as uh, dollar signs. It could affect your output and kind of cause some unintended errors. But I've got most of the usual su suspects up here, uh, but I've included math as well because I'm, I'm going to need it. And really what this looks like is I've got, you know, these uh, multiple variables in my linear regression uh, model here. And if you if you look at this for a second, the first thing I'm, I'm actually doing with this is I'm taking the rooms and I'm calling my, my math uh, import and I'm calling it floor and I'm trying to get the median of all of the rooms. Okay, so when I print this out, it's taking the uh, median number of rooms and the output answer right here is three. Okay. Now I'm doing the same sort of thing with the uh, bedrooms. Um, more so the purpose of this is just to kind of show you how to do the median if, if that's something that you're interested in using. And like before, uh, I've, I'm using this linear model and uh, the dot operator with linear regression. And, and I'm calling that. And, and just like we did in this last uh, example here, uh, it's, it's almost identical to what I've done here. I'm trying to get this linear regression function to, to uh, output here. And so ultimately what I'm doing again is I'm just saying fit, but notice here in this particular case, I have more than one variable. I've got multiple variables. Or in this case, I had a single variable, which was test. And now I'm doing multiple variables. And I'm just putting it in the, the, the square brackets in the exact same way. Okay, and ultimately this is printing out my linear regression. So that's my confirmation that I'm on the right track with what I'm trying to do. Now, again, if you see here, I'm using my reg coefficient I'm assigning that to a value of one. And when I print it out, what you're noticing here 
is I have three different numbers. Also note, I've got changes in their signs. So these two in this particular case are negative. This one here is a positive. So just know that there can be a mix between negative and positive. Now, when I look at my uh, Y intercept or my B, um, it's the same thing that we did last time. Okay. And I'm getting this particular number. All right. And so ultimately now what I'm doing here with my prediction right in here, I'm predicting that if I were to take a uh, place that had uh, 75 square meters, okay. And it had three rooms and it had two bedrooms. Okay. So I don't know what kind of a place this would be where it only had three rooms and two of them were actually a bedroom but just go with it. Okay. Um, and what's happening is I'm able based on that and all of the other samples in my data set to predict a price, an output price for this unit at, uh, you know, almost a quarter of a million dollars. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm not going to continue on anymore with that, but let's look at this again in a different way. Okay. Um, I, I have a couple of options and they're, they're really important because I, I want you to see that the way I'm processing this, I want you to ignore for a second, if you can line number two, but ultimately what's happening is, uh, this is our equation of our line. This is our Y equals MX plus V. Okay. And what we're doing is we're, we're getting the results of the M. Okay. This is our first number right here. Let me see if I can, yeah, I can move it in a place where you can see all the numbers. So I'm, I'm taking my first number up here from my M, uh, which is my coefficient and I'm multiplying it by the area. Okay. 75. And then I'm taking the next number here. Okay and I'm multiplying that by three. And then finally, in this case, I'm doing the same thing. I'm taking the number from the coefficient and I'm multiplying it by the two. And then I'm just adding B, okay? This number here, I'm just adding this B to the end of it. And you can see that when we do the prediction, okay, this, uh, this number here, this, uh, 225,717 and change. It does in fact equal the same exact output when I run this price as a slope, uh, or as a, uh, a linear equation. Okay. Now uh, we've sort of seen this before, right? And I, and I wanted to, uh, bring your attention to the fact that I can do this as a dot product. Okay. It's a much more efficient way to do this. And that's why I'm, I'm choosing to do it in, in this particular case, but you have to understand there's one little issue. So let's say I, I make this uh, X and I make or M and I make this one X. Now I'm going to try and run this and you see, that uh, I'm going to get the error. And the reason I'm going to get the error is probably because I didn't run it all from the top. Uh, so let me just run through all of this. This is what I was talking about before. Okay. And again, we come to this same old chestnut of an issue with our shape. Okay. And we have seen this before. Okay. Where dimension zero is not equal to one for this here. Okay. So if you do the dot product, remember, you always have to be cognizant of the shape that you're trying to do. So in this particular case, if I, uh, it allows me to undo that. And then I run this again, you're seeing that the price is now predicted based on using my dot product. Okay. Okay. So it's very important just to look at the behavior of the slope of the line. When we modify our B or our Y intercept, when our X or our coefficient is set to one. When we move this up and down in a positive direction, you can see what the overall effect is on the Y intercept. 
so the next thing I want to do is actually talk about this uh, mean square error. Okay, and it's, you know, another intimidating looking piece of machine learning math. But ultimately, what it really breaks down to is this. Okay, and I'm gonna I'm gonna break this down a little bit further to explain the steps that are involved. But, you know, we're talking about um, actual value and predicted value here. But when we get into this, again, we're dealing with our uh, MX plus B component of, of the equation. Okay, so ultimately this is a loss function. That's really what this comes down to. And if we take each piece apart, what we have is the difference between the actual and the predicted value of Y. That's what we're trying to get at in this first little step. And then we're going to take the difference and we're going to square that difference so that we can avoid our negative values. So we, we square this part of the equation. And then finally, we find the mean of those squares. Okay, and this is sort of the what you're seeing now on the left side. We're going to just find the mean of all of those squares. Okay. So we're gonna play this guessing game. And I have this uh, apartment building that I live in it. Okay, it's five stories tall. And you're gonna try to guess for me, uh, which floor do I live on? And so you're just gonna start somewhere random. You're gonna say, hey, do you, do you live on the fourth floor? And my answer is gonna be no. And so you're gonna guess, oh, do you live on the second floor? And my answer is going to, again, be no. But note that there was a, a change in, in uh, negative two direction. Okay, and we're now at three. You're guessing, hey, are you on the third floor? And I'm saying, nope, that's not it either. Okay, and from two to three was a, uh, a positive or an increase. But originally when you first guessed at four and you came down to two, there was a negative uh, two value. And so finally we guess again and you realize, okay, fine. Uh, you know, he's probably afraid of heights, so he lives on the first floor. And so therefore you'd be, you'd be right, but you've gone through this process of, of guessing, this sort of trial and error, if you will, until you finally got two the lowest point. So I want to look at this in another way. Okay, we we have our old value, the original value that we started with, and this idea of this step, like how many steps in a certain direction am I going to take? And we're going to take the old value and we're going to minus it from the step size. And when we've got that, then we're going to assign that to become our new and updated value. But really, what is our step size? What is that? And the way we do the step size is we have something called a learning rate. And again, what we just spent some time talking about was multiply by the slope. Okay, so let's look at this on a graph again. And we have this normal XY graph and this, uh, this the way that our line is actually shaped. And you could do this in a three dimensional thing. So I'm sure maybe you've seen three blue, one brown, if you've talked about linear regression or anything like that. Uh, or, but think about this almost, it's being represented in two dimension, but think about it like a cereal bowl. Okay. It's a three dimensional space. Uh, and so we, we have this idea here, this function for, for X and when we plot out each of our points on the line, we can draw this tangent line and we see that our ultimate goal is to get to the bottom. And what we're doing here is taking something called a derivative. Okay. And ultimately our goal is to get to the bottom of the gradient. So this yellow line is our gradient or another term to think about it is a hill. We're trying to get to the bottom of the hill, to the lowest point. And zero, zero really represents the lowest point or our origin. And so we're trying to descend the gradient, okay? And if we look at it on the other side of the y-intercept, 
we look at this kind of movement here. What you're you're seeing is that, you know, if ultimately the goal is to get to the minimum value possible, depending on which side of the uh, the gradient you're on, um, what you'll find is this particular relationship. So if you increase your X, your F of X will increase. OK, and you can see the above formula over uh, just above that that says F of X is actually X squared. Now, that's a little bit of a tongue twister. I get that. But ultimately, you know, we're looking at this as a negative slope on this side of the Y. And if we're on the right side of the, the Y axis uh, and we have this increase, we, we actually don't want to have that. And the reason is we want that to be the positive slope. OK, and you'll see what I mean in a minute. So when we, we look at this equation that we were just talking about a second ago, we have two scenarios and we'll talk about the negative side. So we want our new value to be equal to the old value minus the learning rate times the negative slope. Okay. And on the right side, we see our new value equals the old value minus the multiply of the positive slope. Okay, so what does that really mean? It ultimately means that on the left side, we want our new value to be greater than our old value. And on this side, we actually want our new value to be less than the old value. Okay, bit of a tongue twister, I get that. Begin. I'd like to revisit this idea again here it, because like I just showed in the demonstration or the video with the uh, walking down the hill, what you're seeing is, you know, the gradient descent, but how does this really translate into something a little bit more practical in terms of what we've been talking about already? So this is a, an, an example here where we've got this line of best fit at this point, but as we start to iterate through our gradient descent, you can see that the line is starting to move and get a little bit more smooth. And then we ultimately get that best fit. And you know, how is this happening? If we go back to the, the beginning of this, how is this happening? We've got that line and you can see that all of these deltas or these, these, um, the changes here from the distance of the actual point to the line itself. So we're, we're trying to optimize and get the most perfect that we possibly can, uh, equal distance between all of our points away from our line. Okay. We're just trying to get the ultimate mean, uh, to fit that line in there as perfectly as we possibly can. And I raise this point because, you know, I looked at an apartment building, we looked at a, a you know, a ball rolling down a hill or somebody walking in the woods. But ultimately, what does this really ultimately come down to? And it's this idea here. We're trying to get that line to fit in the best we can, which is why we've been talking about the slope of the line all of this time. OK, so let's get into a little bit more here. When we look graphically what's happening in our changes in Y and our changes in X or our deltas, we can see the, this relationship between a curve and a line. And take note of the positive or negative directions of each of the points. So when we calculate a loss function, you know, you could look at it in a sense to say, this is our loss. Like how much of this distance are we losing? It's kind of one way you could think about it. And again, you know, when we look at this complicated formula, what ultimately becomes the goal? And the goal is to minimize that distance to get the best fit we possibly can. Okay, and there's one more thing I do want to show you about this formula that we can do. It's it's more of an algebra issue, I suppose. But notice here I can remove the squared at the at the end of the equation and I can put the negative two over the n. 
So it's important to, to understand that because when we go to the code, we're actually going to do that. And before we do, I'd like to just look at another example here. Uh, and I've got this little training set. This is a very small, just example. We're going to do a better one in the, in the code. So we've got this training set, very random values, X1, X3, Y2, Y4. And when we look at the equation, I've got this modified equation now with the minus two over N, uh, we can start. So remember, we assumed that I had a starting point here. And this is just a guess. So we have to start somewhere. We have to guess at a, at a starting point. And so when I look at the equation, I can plug the numbers in, but it's probably easier or more clear in line with the actual equation to, to do it this way. So I'm just literally plugging in my numbers and I've color coded it so you can sort of follow along with what's going on here. And as I start to uh, further process this equation, you can start to see that it, it's just evaluating to uh, a simple number, which is a, a minus 12. And, and what does this really mean for us when we talked about this earlier? We've got our new value, which is equal to the old value minus the learning rate times the slope, right? And we could do it this way. We could say B new equals B old minus learning rate times this slope number here. Okay. And at the end of the day, this again, just further evaluates down to 0 0.012. So let's go look at something uh, that we've seen before, but in a live coding example. And we often talk about gradient descent in terms of going for a walk in the hills. Okay. And we're trying to get to the bottom of the hill and all it is, is really a series of little tangents, uh, along a curve with, a you know, a line slope that you can see here. And the goal is to get down to the bottom and we do this one step at a time. And when we're going, we're rising up again, we know that that's the wrong direction, but when we're descending, we know it's the right direction. So now that I'm back in my Jupyter notebook, I've got this file, I'm just calling it gradient descent. And it is what we used before this, uh, military selection.csv. And I've got my, again, usual suspects up here. I've got pandas as PD, numpy as NP, matplotlib.pyplot as PLT. And the first thing I do want to do is process the data. So I'm taking out of this particular file, right? The uh, military selection.csv. Now, you know, it's important to understand that I've only got uh, two columns for this that I'm interested in, and it's the aptitude test and the GPA. And I'm using this here as my uh, to sort of select both my X and Y column. So my X is the first row, uh, or sorry, the first column. And uh, what I want to do is sort of cycle through each row in the first column. And then the same thing here is all rows from the second column, right? And then I'm just outputting the DF. That's all I'm doing here. And then I'm showing this as a scatter plot. And uh, please note that it's capital X and lowercase y. And then I'm just labeling my scatter plot for aptitude test and GPA. So we've done this one before already. But what I want to do is get into doing this as a gradient descent problem. So I'm going to go to the next cell down here and I'll scroll down. And what I want to do is I want to build the model first. That's the first thing that I want to do. And so like we talked about before, I need a starting point and I'm going to look at my coefficient M and I'm going to just choose that starting point. So this is going to be M underscore start. And I'm going to initialize that to zero. Next thing I'm going to do is my B or my Y intercept is going to be um, initialized also to zero. That's my, my starting point for this. And the next thing I want is a learning rate. And I'm going to just initialize my learning rate to 0 0.01. Uh, nice and simple. Now there is one more thing that I'm going to need here is going to be my N 
And this is going to be so that I can uh, get the number of elements in X. Okay, and this is just uh, LEN in brackets. It's going to be capital X. That's just my uh, the number of elements that I have in my data set for X. Okay, and the next thing now that I want to do is a uh, do cycle through a loop. And I'm going to go down to line seven here. And please, you know, with a loop, make sure you're you're cognizant of the indentation. So this will be for I in range and inside here we're going to say n and put our colon in there and then i want to put a note in here in fact what i'd like to do is put several notes in here and once i do the notes then we're going to come back and write the code so the first thing i'm going to do is do a uh, a quick prediction on my what my y value is going to be after that, then I'm going to do uh, find the partial derivative for m. Okay, and then after that, I'm going to find the partial derivative for b. And once I have those two values, then I'm going to do an update on my m. Okay, and again, I'm going to then do an update on my b. And then finally, what I'm going to do is just, uh, I'm going to do a print. And I need to make sure that with my print, I'm outside of the for loop when I do this. Okay, so let's go back to the top and see what this looks like. So I'm going to start off with y underscore uh, predict or predicted. Okay, and that is going to be my m underscore start. Okay, which is on line two, that's what you're seeing. And this is going to be times X plus my B underscore. Let's see if it picks it up. So B start, All right? And so that falls in line with really uh, this formula right here. That's what I'm trying to do, but I'm doing it from my starting position. Now here, I want to do the partial uh, derivative. And so the way I'm going to find that is I'm going to say derivative, forgive the spelling, please, underscore M, sorry, underscore M. And this is going to be the formula that we talked about before. This formula right here. This is what we want to start calculating at this point. So we've got the equals. Now we're going to go with minus two. And in fact, let me put that in a bracket. Do minus two in a bracket. And we're going to divide by N. Okay, and you can see line uh, five has the value for N. We'll close this off. And I want to multiply this by the sum of lowercase y minus y underscore predicted okay so that's the first part of that and i think i'm missing a bracket potentially and the reason i'm missing a bracket is because i haven't actually done the proper equation so this is i have to go to here capital x and then multiply and then close that out. So I need to get the y minus y predicted. I'm going to multiply that by x. And then I'm taking the sum. And then I'm multiplying it by this here. Okay. So that's what I'm trying to do at that point. Now let's go to the b derivative. Uh, just to keep this relatively consistent. I'll change this to b. And this B will be uh, very similar. It'll be minus 2 divided by N. And we will, again, multiply the sum. And after that multiplication, it's going to just simply be this part here. This uh, Y minus Y predicted. All right. Close that off. And we're, we should be good to go. Now I need to update my M and I need to update my B. So my M is actually going to be 
um, M dart. And this is going to be minus my learning rate. And then multiply by my derivative M. This one here. And remember previously what I said was that our new value is going to equal our old value minus the step size, but we have yet to define our step size, which is now our learning rate times our slope. So that's what we're working on right now. So let me just move that up this so it's a little bit better. And uh, yeah, so we've got that line right there. We're, we're good for that. Now I have to go and update my uh, my B and it's almost identical except that I'm replacing it for B. So why don't I just make life easier for all of us. Copy and paste and make this the uh, indentation work proper. This needs to be a B and so does this. Okay. So that's all we need to do for that. Now the print statement, what I want to do is, is pretty simple. I'm, I'm just going to go and drop it in there. Uh, I don't think I need a long explanation for my print statement. Uh, so I, what I'm printing out is my M coefficient and my Y intercept, the ones that have now been updated. Okay. So let me uh, start at the top again. I'm going to run this. I'm going to run this and you can see that my M coefficient and my Y intercept are both printing out nicely to the screen. And really the last section I want to do is, is make the prediction. And I'm going to do my uh, sort of update of the prediction that I made. So if you look at my line nine, consider that that was done with my uh, starting values. My M start and B start were both set to zero. But now I can run it through the entire equation with updated um, information from lines 15 and 17. And so what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to do Y underscore predict. And it's not in there because I didn't type it properly, but you can see Y underscore predicted. And let's look at the formula again. So M times capital X plus okay so that's the formula that's our our formula for our line okay and that's what we've been working towards this whole time so let's have a look at what what this is really going to be so if we do plt and we say scatter and with our scatter plot we're going to say capital x comma y and that's just going to show us what we've we've got so far now i want to put two labels on here and i don't really want to Try and type it in in front of everybody. So I've got these two things going right now. And so let's see if it produces any result. Okay, so we, we've got this, uh, which is good. We can keep going and develop that a little, little further. Okay, so if I say PLT and I do scatter, uh, scatter, not, uh, not dot, sorry, scatter, and I say capital X comma, y underscore my predicted now what am i going to get assuming i spell things properly so what do, what do you think that i'm going to get as a result of this and i suppose in order to see that i should do plt dot show otherwise i won't probably see it so let's run this and see what you think i'm going to get okay so what does this actually mean it it means that for each value of X, okay, along the bottom, uh, we have a predicted value of Y. And so you're seeing the predicted value of Y in the orange color, okay? And the actual value of Y is all of our blue dots, okay? And so along the regression line, we get the least errors. So the closer to the line, the, the least amount of errors. Uh, we get for each value of X. And if we're talking about this in terms of a line, if I took the furthest leftmost dot here and the furthest right 
dot, we could connect that and make a line. And I think that that is actually a better representation of what we're looking at. Um, so let me let me close this one out, and I'm gonna just write a little bit of uh, plot um, plt dot plot. So instead of a scatter, I'm gonna do a plot, and this is going to be um, min and in brackets capital X. And outside of that bracket, because you can see I've got the square brackets mixed in there, I'm going to say max is going to be the capital X again. And then I'm going to go outside the square bracket and I'm going to do the same thing for the, the Y. And I need square brackets again and it's going to be min. In here it's going to be uh, Y underscore uh, predict or predicted. Go outside the bracket and I'm going to say max, um, you guessed it, max y underscore predicted. Doesn't work if you don't type it properly. Uh, predicted. And then I'm going to go outside that square bracket and I'm going to reset my color. So color is going to be equal to in brackets red. Okay, and then that should be it. Okay, uh, let me just test that out and see if it changes. Okay, you can see now that it's changed to this line of, of best fit. And so everything along the line has the least amount of error. Okay. So at this point, I've covered an enormous amount of stuff. And I think this video is probably getting too long as it is. And so what I would encourage you to do is test this out on your, your own. Um, don't necessarily just take what I've got. What I, what I'd almost recommend is that you, uh, put your, um, gradient descent into its own function and, and try to do it that way, or just play around with this and, and see if you can tweak it a little bit, uh, make it better, make it worse, change your sample size, uh, import data that is from some unknown source and, and see what you can do with this. It's, it takes a little bit to get used to this. Um, recognizing that we're bouncing around from graphs to walking in hills and even going up and down in apartment buildings. Um, so, you know, it just takes a little bit of time to get used to this. But I want to say that it's, an, a very, it's a very, very important subject in uh, the world of machine learning, especially when we get to, uh, hopefully we come back and finish off the neural net. Okay, so again, um, you, you, this is one of those things that you don't want to not fully understand. Um, so go through this and make sure that you're really kind of understanding the concepts. And if, if not, there's other resources out there if you don't feel that I explained it well enough. But do the best you can, but don't let this go. All right. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you next time.